In this lesson, we're going to be taking a look at geometric sequences and how they relate to the functions and formulas that we've been working with lately. So, a reminder, a sequence is a pattern or a set of numbers that follow a specific pattern. We studied arithmetic sequences previously, which in order to move from term to term, we added the same amount. These behaved a lot like linear functions, where that movement from term to term was called the common difference. It was an equivalence of slope. Well, now that we are studying exponential functions, geometric sequences come into play. Because in order for an item to be a geometric sequence, in order to move from term to term, like we have for this sequence shown here, we have to multiply by the same item. So, in order to move from 2 to 10, we multiplied by 5. To move from 10 to 50, we multiplied by 5. And to move from 50 to 250, again we multiplied by 5. So anytime we have a sequence where we're multiplying again and again and again, it is geometric. Now our notation is going to be very similar to what we had before. We're going to have our recursive formula. Recursive meaning that in order to get the next term, we have to have the previous one. So our formula here is going to be a sub n equals r times a sub n minus 1. And then a sub 1 equals some starting value. So again, the pieces of this, a sub n means the term that we're looking for. a sub n minus 1 is the previous term, and r is the common ratio. It's this number that we're using to get from one term to the next. a sub 1 is our starting item. So looking at the formula that we have shown here, we would have a sub n equals 5 times a sub n minus 1, where a sub 1 is 2. In other words, start at 2 and multiply by 5 as you go. 2, 10, 50, 250, 1,250, and so on and so on. An explicit formula, if you'll remember, is a formula that allows us to move directly into any given term rather than having to build it from the one before. So for our explicit formulas in geometric sequences, a sub n, the term that I'm looking for, equals a sub 1, our starting value, times r to the n minus 1 power. So you can see here we have a lot of the structure that is similar to what we get when we are talking about exponential functions. r is how we multiply from item to item, and repeated multiplication is just exponents. In the explicit formula, you don't have to have a starting value because that's embedded here with our a sub 1. So using this sequence that we have on the page, a sub n equals our a sub 1, which is 2, times our common ratio, which is 5, to the n minus 1 power. You'll notice that this n minus 1 stays in both locations, and a sub n stays in both places. Whereas on our recursive formula, a sub n, a sub n minus 1, and a sub 1 are the same, but we have to put in what our first term and our common ratio are. So how do we identify these formulas or uh, sequences? How do we begin writing them and what can we do with them? That's really what we're looking at in this lesson. So first, how do we identify? Well, in order to get a geometric sequence, any term to move from term to term, we have to multiply by the same amount. So what we're looking at is how can I move from one term to the next as I go through these. So for our first sequence that we see here, 3, 6, 12, 24, 48, how am I moving from one term to the next? Well, from 3 to 6, I could either add 3 or I could multiply by 2. Then as I look at my next item, 6 to 12, I either add 6 or I multiply by 2. To move from 12 to 24, I either add 12 or multiply by 2. And from 24 to 48, again, I either add 24 or multiply by 2. So my common item 
in each of those methods was I was multiplying by 2. Because I'm always multiplying by 2, my common ratio, r, is 2. And my a sub 1 is my first term, 3. So if we have the pieces, we could then take this and put it into either a recursive or an explicit formula. And we'll get some more practice with that in a few minutes. So let's take a look at our next sequence. 3, 6, 9, 12, and 15. Well, how do I move from 3 to 6? It's easy. I add 3 or I multiply by 2 like I was before. To move from 6 to 9, I can add 3, but there really isn't an easy number to multiply by. And then 9 to 12, I'm adding 3, 12 to 15. So this one, I'm always adding 3 to move from one term to the next. So because I'm adding and not multiplying, this is not geometric. This is arithmetic, and if you need a refresher, uh, you might want to go back and review the lesson on arithmetic sequences. Okay. Next one, to move from one-third to one-ninth, I multiply by one-third. To move from one-ninth to one-twenty-seventh, I multiply by one-third, and from one-twenty-seventh to one-eighty-first, I move to I multiply by one third. So each time I'm multiplying by one third. Now some might say, well, to move from one term to the next in that sequence, you could just divide by three. That is true, but in arithmetic or in geometric sequences, in order to move from term to term by definition, I have to multiply by the same amount. And dividing by a number is the same as multiplying its reciprocal. So here our r is one-third and our a sub one is also one-third. And again we'll get practice writing these in a minute. Our last sequence 4, 7, 11, 16, and 22. Well in order to move from 4 to 7 there's nothing easy to multiply by but I could add 3 and then to move from 7 to 11 I add 4 11 to 16 I add 5 16 to 22 I add 6 so in this case I'm not multiplying by the same amount nor am I adding the same amount each time so this is a sequence it does follow a pattern to move from term to term but it's not always the same thing that I'm adding, so it is not, not arithmetic. I'm not multiplying, so it's not geometric. So once that I have a sequence I know to be geometric, how do I go about writing its formulas in both that explicit and recursive formats? Let's take a look at that next. So our first sequence here, 7, 21, 63, 189. First thing we have to do is find our common ratio. So doing a little work here. 21 divided by 7 is 3. 63 divided by 21 is also 3. So our common ratio is going to be 3. If I also took 189 and divided by 63, I would get 3 in that case as well. <clears throat> Next, what's our first term? So our a sub 1 is 7. Okay, so for a recursive formula, remember it's a sub n equals r, in this case 3, times a sub n minus 1. So in other words, I'm always going to take the previous term and multiply by 3. My a sub 1 is 7. I do have to have both parts for a valid recursive formula. I have to tell how am I moving from term to term and what am I starting with. Now for my explicit formula, a sub n equals my a sub 1, which is 7, times r, which is 3, to the n minus 1 power. And that's all I need for that case. Next 
formula, our next sequence that we have shown here. So, 4 divided by 2 is 2, 8 divided by 4 is 2, and 16 divided by 8 is 2. So my common ratio is 2. My first term is also 2. So when I go to write my formulas, first my recursive, a sub n equals 2 times a sub n minus 1, where my a sub 1 is 2. In other words, start with 2 and double each time. Now in order to get my explicit formula, a sub n equals my a sub 1 times my common ratio to the n minus 1 power. Remember, for short items or items that are close to a sequence, the recursive formula tends to be easier. For items that are well along in our system, the explicit formula tends to be better. If I wanted the twelfth item in a sequence, twelve times doubling my number is a bit challenging, whereas an explicit formula, all I have to do is substitute in a twelve for my n. Okay? Let's take a look at our last one. So, negative 20 divided by 40 is a negative 1 half. 10 divided by negative 20 is negative 1 half. And negative 5 divided by 10 is a negative 1 half. So my r is negative 1 half and my a sub 1 is 40. So going for my recursive formula, a sub n equals uh, my a r value, which is a negative one half, times a sub n minus one, and my a sub one is forty. So in other words, I'm going to start by forty and multiply by negative one half each time I move to a new term. For my explicit formula a sub n equals my a sub 1, which is 40, times a negative 1 half to the n minus 1 power. Now, in this instance, our method for generating our recursive formula is a little bit different than a straight exponential function, because in an exponential function, this value here can never be negative. In geometric sequences, it can. So we do have a minor departure there from what we had previously. Okay. So if we're given a sequence, identifying it and writing the formula for it, but what happens if we're given the formula? How do we then go and write our sequence and even graph what we have? So here I have a sequence, a sub n equals 6 times 2 to the n minus 1 power. So if I was going to generate a table of values for this, remember n has to be a natural number. In other words, a positive counting number, the numbers that my 5-year-old would understand. So I have my n values and my a sub n values. So if I substitute in a 1, putting it up into the formula, 1 minus 1 is 0, 2 to the 0 power is 1, 6 times 1 is 6. And we should expect that because our a sub 1 is this first number. Now what are we doing each time? According to the formula, this is my common ratio, so I should be doubling each time. Let's test that out. If I substitute in a 2, well, 2 minus 1 is 1, 2 to the first power is 2, 6 times 2 is 12. So sure enough, I doubled my value. Then my third term, if I double, becomes 24. My fourth term becomes 48. Now if we go to graph these points, we have to remember that geometric sequences are just the numbers that we end up with. It's not the items in between. So when we have a graph, it's going to be a discrete graph, meaning each point is individually located on our system or on our display. So in order to accommodate some of the span that I have here on my 
a sub n values, I'm going to count my vertical axis, my a sub n axis, by twos. So my first line is two, followed by four, and if I keep going, I can end up with my graph being numbered as such. Across my n axis, my horizontal axis, and this one is a sub n, I'm going to count every fourth line as one. So one, two, three, and I don't have room for the four. But now when I go to plot my points, I'm going to end up with the following. So on my, when n is one, I get a a sub n value of six. When n is two, I come out at 12. And when n is three, I end up up here at 24. And if you look, we are slowly getting this system or the set of points that have a curve to them just like an exponential growth system would have. But remember, we don't connect the points. This is a discrete graph, so individual points are all we need. So geometric sequences, pattern of numbers that can be developed by multiplying by the same item as we move from term to term, and graphing, writing, making our displays. So make sure you have these down. They're very helpful when we're looking at large growth systems and applications and other means.